Let's welcome Karen Patel, IT Administrator at Trans Lifeline. Trans Lifeline Hotline provides peer support and crisis support, and the microgrants program uh, provides low barrier grants to trans people in need of legal name changes and updated government IDs, hormone replacement therapy, as well as funds for trans people who are incarcerated. As IT Administrator, Kieran Patel helps maintain and develop the technological infrastructure behind these services. Today's demo focuses on Trans Lifeline's hotline dashboard. Trans Lifeline maintains their hotline telephone system via Twilio, allowing for private, secure, and dispersed connections without the use of a traditional physical call center. Yeah, so first, um, a little bit of background about Trans Lifeline. We are an organization based in peer support, meaning that as a crisis hotline, we offer support to trans callers from trans operators. And a problem that we encountered in building this organization is that crisis support for people experiencing suicidal ideation or even actively planning suicide is that um, that crisis support is a practice that's bound up in carceral institutions. We know that calling emergency services for trans people experiencing suicidality overall does not improve the situation. The state of policing and the risk of non-consensual hospitalization puts suicidal people even more at risk in general, not to mention the unique discrimination that trans people are subject to in these situations. Therefore, our model is to offer care with an informed consent model where we do not call emergency services on behalf of a caller unless we are given explicit instructions by the caller to do so. Um, and we've informed them about potential outcomes. So our problem then was to create a tech infrastructure for the hotline that could support this model. So the basic version of our solution is that we just needed a telephony system that could connect our dispersed team of operators to callers to support some kind of data logging for internal review and for quality assurance, and also to keep both callers and operators identities anonymous to each other. But we wanted to be more specific with our implementation to create a telephonic system to be used in line with those abolitionist values. So our approach was to create a hotline infrastructure that actually wouldn't allow us to go back on our word. That word being that we would never use that geolocation data to send emergency services to a caller without their consent. And you'll see that the technology we use does just that. Our operators cannot access that location data. So let's get into the demo. Um, to see that in effect, I'm gonna walk through what actually happens when someone calls the hotline. So for our call routing and hosting, we use Twilio, which we've also used to create that custom dashboard for our operators to log calls. So when an individual calls the hotline, their number is logged by Twilio such that operators are not able to see it. Instead, that phone number is given a code name, like this example on the slide. Um, and that code name does not contain any information related to the caller's actual identity, but instead is used by our hotline and quality assurance staff to associate, aggregate, and review caller data, meaning that operators themselves cannot see a phone number or any other information that might be associated with the phone number of the caller. Likewise, our operator is rooted through Twilio as well, um, so the caller can never see the operator's number. So instead, when a call comes through the hotline, the operator will see an incoming call from our internal number that then routes them through to the caller. And in relation to that, operators are not able to access location data related to the caller's phone number or IP address, and that information can't be made available using our custom dashboard. That's because that information, the IP address, the phone number, is all stored as encrypted aggregate data through Twilio. So Twilio allows us easily and intentionally to control the flow of incoming data, protect the call of, or excuse me, protect the anonymity of callers, while also making sure that our staff can access enough information to review and improve our services. In association with the caller's code name, operators can assign general informational tags to the call, such as the caller's gender, their experience with suicidality, or their religion, to name a few of those tags. All of this information is collected for two reasons. One, so that our quality assurance team can review that and aggregate um, data, and also just for general data review. For instance, if we want to see um, if we've received increased calls from individuals who identify themselves as Catholic after a comment from the Pope on trans-specific issues, um, we can do that using this tagging system. Our hotline system and associated dashboard allow our operators to provide that peer support through calls anonymously and securely, while also still allowing us to collect data provided to us in order to understand how we can provide bigger community impact. 
So our call to action um, would be to honor the autonomy of those in crisis, to focus on how we can build community divested from comps, and also just generally to consider how we might build tech intentionally to be in line with our values. Thank you.